Good morning. Time to make the coffee. Today's flavor is gingerbread from Aldi's, the Barissimo brand. It's going to be 46 degrees and rainy today. It's still pretty dark because it's so cloudy out. But that's all right. At least you don't have to shovel the rain. So I had a wonderful holiday weekend. Yesterday we went to some theme park where they had uh, go-karts and they had the overhead um, things where you put on a harness and then you can <laughs> go flying through the air and dangle on this bungee cord thing. And it, the kids really had fun. And it looked like so much fun. I wish I could have done it, but... I don't need to break something. Then the only fun I'll be having is, is in a hospital. No, <laughs> I have to be careful with my osteoporosis that I don't break something. So I got a new mug. Isn't that cute? It's from my daughter for Christmas. Uh, we finally exchanged gifts and um, she got me this really, really cute snowman mug. I knew I was getting it. Uh, we bought it down, or she bought it down in Amish country when I got this one, too. But I just love this little snowman. It's so cute. Let me show it to you. It's got little snowmen on the bottom. And this one, maybe I could even keep out for winter because it's a snowman. Even though the snowman has a Santa hat on. I don't know. We'll see. I'll use it for a while before goes into the um, Christmas mug spot. I keep my Christmas mugs in a hutch. You can't really see them. They're, they're like locked away. But anyway, I have, um, what, what is it? Cinnamon, it's oatmeal creamer. Coffee cake, cinnamon coffee cake. That's what it is. And it's a good creamer too. Right now, it's probably my second favorite. Still haven't found anything to replace the chocolate caramel. And I'm not really even looking. But once in a while, you know, it's nice to have a variety. But this is good. The oatmeal creamer is very creamy, too. So, I've made oat milk before. It's not hard to make. The thing is, with homemade versus... Um, commercial oatmeal creamer, the homemade tends to separate, whereas this, I'm sure, has chemicals added to it to keep it looking nice. So cheers! I can't believe it's going to be a new year pretty soon. I don't know where 2023 went. Oh, that's very hot, but it's good. So, I don't know. I, I hope we can make 2024 a better year. For me, I had a lot of um, home repairs and things that I had to have done. A new roof, um, all kinds of little home repairs. Um, it just it went on and on and on. And I know a lot of you have the same thing going on. So... I'm hoping the home repairs, I would like a break from that because I didn't have home repairs for many, many years because I had this house built in 2003, but it's to the point now where, you know, things start to wear out. You have to replace your uh, windows and roofs and air conditioner and, and heat and all that stuff. I already did the, um, the roof and the hot water tank. I already did that, and um, one of my windows, and I'm going to have to go through the house systematically and replace those windows where the seal has broken. My front window had to be done. It was so bad. You couldn't even see out of it anymore. So that's off the list, and it's nice to look outside now. But uh, I'm hoping uh, to get a little break from the home repairs. That would be good. So 2023 was not a 
terrible year. I mean, financially, it's gotten to be pretty, pretty difficult, especially for those of us that are on a fixed income. But uh, 2024, I don't know. Um, I don't know what kind of plans they have going there. But I can't say 2023 was a bad year for me. Um, lots of good things happened too. So, um, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. We don't have a crystal ball. As long as nothing too ridiculous goes on and we're all safe and I wish you all that you all have a safe and happy life anyway with many blessings. So anyway, I'm going to drink my coffee and then I will meet you at the budget book, which December is winding down and uh, we'll see what's going on there. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so here I am back at my budget book. So yesterday I did spend money. It was my little granddaughter's 10th birthday and um, I gave her money for her birthday. So I did spend money yesterday, but of course, you know, I have a certain amount of money. I give the grandkids every year for their birthdays a different amount of money that I give them for Christmas, and it's the same with my kids. Um, I do get them presents, too, if I know what they want. I'm more than happy to do that. But if they don't know what they want and they don't give me something to go off of, um, I usually don't buy them gifts. Now, my daughter, she's really easy to buy for, so um, I do get her gifts that I think she'll like because we have very similar taste. But um, it's harder for me with my sons because um, my one son, he's he's a, sort of a little bit little bit of a minimalist. I mean, not, you know, just a mattress on the floor and stuff like that, but he doesn't have a lot of stuff and he gets rid of things all the time. So it's a little harder to buy for, for him. And my oldest son, he, uh, he, he's a prepper. So, you know, he, he likes things for prepping, but it's still a little harder to buy for them than it is for my daughter. And the grandkids, I have no idea what they're into with all the electronics and things. Um, you know, I could buy them something and then they could really think it was lame. So I, I don't go there unless they tell me a specific thing that they want. But anyway, that's the last birthday for this year. Um, and then my oldest son has a birthday in... Uh, January, but not until the end. So January, I'm hoping for me, will be a very low spend month. Now, <clears throat> for those of you that are new here on this budget book here, I only put discretionary spending on there. I don't put bills. I don't put like home repairs. Um, none of that goes, I don't put, I do put food on there. I put gasoline on there. Um, I put gifts and anything that's discretionary spending that I don't absolutely have to put on there goes on my budget book here. So um, anyway, that's the way I do it. And then I have a sheet where I track my bills and what I spend on other things. And I do have a video for that with my actual numbers uh, somewhere in the archives. So if you want to, if you're interested in that, um, it should be easy to find if you do a search for it. So anyway, uh, I'm hoping the rest of uh, 2023 that I don't have to spend money, but you never know. You know, sometimes somebody will say, oh, let's go to lunch or something, or this. so I'll go. You know, I don't like to forego uh, time I can spend with friends and family. So anyway, that's my little budget book chat for today, and I'll be back. 101 Ways to Simplify Your Life by Candy Paul 
Day number 52. Create simple entertainment. Have fun at your party and embrace the unexpected. Celebrate your family, friends, and food. Laugh, sing, dance, and eat. Tomorrow Weiss. Feeding the birds offers one simple form of entertainment. Inexpensive homemade entertainment can also include old-fashioned games, like charades or musical chairs, tossing a frisbee in the park, playing tag, or setting up a game of volleyball brings people together to enjoy their own amusements. Have a movie evening with plenty of popcorn to share with friends or family. Host a simple potluck to celebrate a full moon, or the first rose of summer, or the last day before school starts. The simplest things can bring friends and family together for a good time. Gather a few friends for an easy potluck picnic in the park. Bring a frisbee or a ball and enjoy a game of catch before sitting down to eat. Well, home again, home again. So yesterday I had planned on spending a nice quiet day. I had some things that I wanted to get done, but I just wanted to take my time and get through my tasks and nothing in particular, just get things settled down from the holidays. Well, I got a call from the fire department and I didn't think anything of it at first. I didn't know it was the fire department. So they left a message and then uh, I was getting a lot of scam calls, which happens more and more again. I don't know, they're out in force it seems like. So a lot of calls, <clears throat> if I don't know the number, I just ignore them. I figure, you know, if it's something, leave me a message. So I got like three or four different calls and then I noticed that there was a message from one of them. So I do like to keep my uh, voicemail box cleaned out. So I gave it a listen, and here it was, the uh, Rocky River Fire Department. And they had taken my mom to the emergency room. Well, I guess she was having problems with shortness of breath. So they took her there, and I listened to the message like an hour after he called. So, of course, I wasn't dressed. I was going to have a pajama day. I was going to enjoy myself. So, of course, well, that plan fell by the wayside, so I quickly got dressed, and I went there because I figured she's by herself, you know. Um, and that ER was just overrun with people. There were people everywhere, all over the hallway, in the rooms, all over. So we sat there all day, literally. I got there around, I don't know, it was between 10 and 11, and we didn't get out of there till Probably about 5.30, they did all kinds of tests, they did all, they looked at this, they looked at that, so pretty much from head to toe, and they had no idea what was, what was wrong, so go figure, but I could tell she was really not feeling well, so, but, um, so I stayed with her last night at her house, and, uh, I mean, she was pretty confused, so, uh, but today she's kind of, kind of back to her normal, but uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's something that I just wanted to touch on a little bit, a subject. Um, as you get older yourself, and you have a very old parent, it really, really gets tough. And that goes for those people, too, that are couples. And one of them is the caregiver of the wife or the husband. Or if you're a caregiver of a child that maybe was a special needs child. As you get old, older, it gets really tough. Because you start to 
get your own medical issues. There are days where you just don't feel well, where you can hardly get through the day yourself. And then, you know, if you have an, a, a, a person that you need to take care of, it, it gets really difficult. So um, I'm finding that's what's going on. Now, my mom's still pretty good. I mean, for 94. But, you know, she has things that come up that I need to pay attention to. And, yes, my, my kids do help out. But, you know... Um, I'm the one that she turns to. Um, I'm the one that she she trusts to take care of her. So that's what I do. But I'll tell you, it's not easy as you get older. I, it's never easy. But the older you get and the older your parent gets or the older your spouse gets, trust me, I get it. It's very, very difficult. And the, the thing is, yeah, there's help available out there, and you know, but that all takes money. You know, you have to pay for help. People aren't going to do it gratis. So, you know, that can very, very quickly drain your savings if, if you have that issue going on. So anyway, for today, all is well that ends well. I was going to give my... Uh, leg doctor a call today, but I got home so late by the time I got home the office was already closed So I have to call him tomorrow because I still have issues with that with that leg especially the one leg um, So I need to go in for a follow-up with him and then I had to schedule several follow-up appointments with my mom too so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed because here in Ohio we can get some pretty nasty win winters with a lot of snow. So I'm just hoping when all these appointments are scheduled that we're not going to be having a blizzard because that even adds more to a stressful situation. Because it's like, oh, I'm going to get there, you know, uh, if you're slipping and sliding down the road, <clears throat> that's not a good thing. So it, it's, it's stressful. Um, now, I've been doing, you know, taking care of my mom for uh, a few years now. And uh, it, so far, so good, knock on wood. But like I said, as you age yourself, it gets really difficult because you get to the point where you start to need a little help yourself. So it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. Uh, but, you know, we, we manage to get through it. Um, I try and keep a positive attitude about it, uh, which isn't always easy, but getting down in the dumps about it isn't going to change a thing. It just isn't. It's not going to make life any easier. It's not going to make taking care of your loved ones any easier. In fact, it just adds to the problem. So trying to find the blessings that you're still receiving in a bad situation is very helpful to me. So I know some of you are in the same situation, either with an aging parent or an, an aging spouse or an ill spouse, or you're ill yourself and your spouse has to take care of you or your child has to take care of you. Um, our medical system is not the greatest when it comes to old folks. It just isn't. I mean, if you don't have any money at all, um, you know, you could always go on Medicaid. And But the only choice you have, even if you're still alert and oriented, is to, to go into a nursing home. Uh, assisted living is a lot of times off the table because it's very expensive. And even if you don't need nursing home care, it's pretty much the only thing that the government will, will pay for. So, you know, in the meantime, you watch your whole life savings going to a nursing home, which, you know, and, and they don't allow you much money either. You can have a very, very small 
bank account. I know it used to be like $75 that you could have, which, you know, and especially in today's economy, they may have changed it by now. I don't know. But when I worked in the nursing home um, environment, uh, a resident there could um, have $75 of personal money and the rest all went to the government because that's what Medicaid is. It, you know, it's, it's um, government uh, subsidized care. So even if you're not um, in need of skilled nursing or a nursing home, that's where you end up. So anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, a little bit about the, the system in our government. I mean, some are even worse in other countries. But um, I think as we're heading, unfortunately, towards socialized medicine, it's not going to get any better. So we used to have a really, really good medical system here, but that's kind of gone south. Um, and we'll see. That's all I can say. But getting down and out and depressed, I know we all do it but trying to keep ahead of that mood and just look, still looking for the positive things in your life will at least help out a little bit. You know, talking to somebody that you trust, a friend or a relative uh, about your situation uh, will be very helpful. So anyway, um, I'm exhausted. So I'm going to wrap up this video for today, and uh, hopefully I'll be a little more rested tomorrow. So for now, I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. It helps my channel grow. Don't forget to share. Thanks for watching.